Hello everyone, welcome back to the United Vibe. Yes, what is going on at United right now? A little bit of a scenic view of Old Trafford for you today as well. Do you like it? Let me know. Get your comments in below, everyone. I'm going over everything that is going on today at Old Trafford. Obviously, we're getting a few more stories come out now. The big news has broke. We've been live on the channel over the weekend, the last few days. It's been brilliant. Cheers for tuning in, everyone, as well. Loads of subscribers, loads of positive feedback. Absolutely brilliant to be back amongst it and just doing things my way and doing it a little bit different. But yeah, this is different for you. No one's done anything from this spot before, have they? But yes, I know this place like the back of my hand. Loads of different spots of Old Trafford. Let's get into what and why I'm actually here today. I wanted to come and film at this point simply because here this looks great. Old Trafford looks like a modern stadium, but there's lots going on that need repairing here at Old Trafford. What are the priorities? Where is Sir Jim Radcliffe going to go? If and only if Thursday's board meeting goes well and everything is approved with the United board members and shareholders and everyone who has a say at Old Trafford and what they think is right for the club. Do the Glazers want this? Is it just what's been reported again? I mean, let's be honest, throughout this whole process of the takeover, we've kind of had the wool pulled over our eyes a little bit as fans. So let's wait until everything is official. But I want to talk about the result reports and everything that has been going on and what's been talked about with Sir Jim Radcliffe. Obviously, I talked last night on the live show about possible directors of football, new CEOs. But we're hearing today that, obviously, there's going to be a complete overhaul. Uh, historic check of Manchester United is running. It's day-to-day, -day, the operations, what works, what doesn't work. And one thing that does work, apparently, according to, well, according to Sir Jim Radcliffe, is Eric Ten Hag. And that's where I wanted to start with this. Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United is seen as one of the positives for Sir Jim Radcliffe and the Ineos group. So looking ahead and looking at that, do you think that is a positive? And guys, obviously keep getting your comments in below. There's a lot of people who've already said to me the first thing you need to do is get rid of Eric Ten Hag. I mean, for me, no. He has sort of brought a culture back to Manchester United. And to be honest, if I was Ten Hag, I'd probably be knocking on the door as soon as this meeting's done on Thursday asking, OK, who is my boss? Who am I accountable to? Who do I go to when I've got a problem or need something? But apparently the Ineos group are happy with Ten Hag. They see him as one of the few positives. I'm saying few. That wasn't reported as few, but I'm going to say few because there hasn't been much for us to be excited about at Old Trafford or at Manchester United over the last few years. But Eric Ten Hag, bald his best, has definitely been one of the positives for us to get, get excited about or encouraged about. But yeah, so what does that mean? If Sir Jim Radcliffe is looking at Eric Ten Hag as a positive, then surely coming in, you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to upset the rhythm of the manager or what he's trying to build. So you go in, you have a meeting with him, and surely you back him. And I'm not, I'm not just meaning backing in Ten Hag in like transfers, January coming up, because we're hearing it's going to be another eight weeks, even if this process is agreed on Thursday and the 25% stake is accepted by the board members. It's going to be another couple of months before it all goes through. He's got to do the fit and proper persons check with the Premier League as well as a Premier League club owner. That's only right. So looking at it, it's going to be a bit of time to get in, but he can still obviously talk to people. Ten Hag is his main man. And we've seen a lot of people not happy. A lot of pundits complain about Ten Hag's firm hand. And likes of Jadon Sancho, Harry Maguire, David De Gea, Ronaldo. All these players, these big so-called stars, Ten Hag has treated in the way he thinks is right for this football club and how this club should be run. The manager is number one. You need to be in sole charge. You need to let the players know that you're number one. And I think that's how he's acted. So, so Jim Radcliffe, ultimately, if he's happy with Ten Hag, surely has to come in and back that stance. So what does that mean for these sorts of players? If I was, if I was Jadon Sancho, I'd be looking at this going, well... Maybe I do have to apologise. Maybe I do have to actually up my game. Maybe do something more on the training ground slash pitch to actually prove my point. Because if I'm going to go into a fight with Eric Ten Hag, I'm going to go into a fight possibly with the new sporting running or part ownership of Manchester United. If Ineos come in and everything's accepted on Thursday. So there's a lot of sort of subplots to what is going on right now. And obviously the focus has been taken off the team, the manager, what's happening in the league over these last few days, it's been international duty. Let's not forget how crap we've been. Jadon Sancho, the mess that he's got himself in, not apologising to Eric Ten Hag, it's pretty poor, to be honest. And for a club like United, we've all had our opinions on it and said our piece. It isn't where it isn't the way that United should be running. It's embarrassing and everyone's probably laughing at us right now. So 
for me I look at this and I go so Jim Radcliffe back in Ten Hag means well Jaden Sancho you're going to have to do something you're going to have to get pull your finger out and actually make an apology or something like that because you're not going to get back in this team because the next reports and these are all coming from the Athletic by the way so it's been well reported and well documented the next report comes in that obviously if Sir Jim Radcliffe does come in Manchester United and this is the sad part of this video and what I've read so far and giving you the update on what we're looking at right now is that Manchester United's day-to-day -day running the financial runnings of the club isn't going to change that much I mean yeah it's not going to change that much which obviously means that we're still going to be in hundreds of millions of pounds of debt we're going to still see dividends taken out. Is that what that means? Clarity again. And then on Thursday, we may get some more information about this. But these are the reports coming out. There's nothing much more they can change in terms of how financially Manchester United is being run. So for me, that's a bad part of it. But also within that, Manchester United apparently have paved a pathway for more players to be outed just to make money for the manager, i.e., make some room within the wage structure of Manchester United. Ultimately, the main point that came out of it from The Athletic was that Manchester United want to be able to control their squad better. If players are in and out of contract, they're just going to be let go on a free. Wages off the bill, money saved. They don't want superstars, or they call them superstars, they don't want players or big players sat on the fringes on stupid superstar wages. That's what they don't want. That's basically what they're trying to get to. That's the new structure within the playing staff. And ultimately, everything that you look at, the talk of the people coming in possibly to work with Sir Jim Radcliffe, everything that they're putting in place, if that financial side at Manchester United isn't going to change and the day-to-day -day running is going to be pretty similar even under Sir Jim Radcliffe, then you've got to look at this, and this is what I wanted to round this up with. You've got to look at this and say, well, if that's the case, doesn't matter what director of football it is, doesn't matter who is in as a CEO to run the football club, it all boils down to what we've been known or what we've known about for the last 18 months. Ten Hag has to perform miracles with this squad just to actually make this whole structure work because United are only going to make money if they're dining at the top table of European football, if they're playing in the Champions League, if they're competing for the Premier League. Right now we're a mid-table team. What is Sir Jim Radcliffe going to achieve in this short space of time? He ain't going to be challenging for the Premier League. United need to be in the top four, basically, is what I'm saying. So everything that Sir Jim Radcliffe is going to say on Thursday, if this goes through and we get a, we get a statement from Ineos, if this all happens, ultimately, it counts for absolutely nothing. Because it all matters what happens on that pitch and what Ten Hag can do with this current crop, which has got us mid-table playing absolute crap. They need to pull their fingers out Ten Hag needs to get a grip. He needs to sort of release some of these big name players. Stop playing the big names. Play the best team, not the best players and all that. I've said it on many of fan vlogs all the way through this season, game after game. Everything that is being talked about off the pitch right now all comes down, filters down through the funnel, right down to Baldi's best. Ten Hag has to make it work on the pitch. Otherwise, the structure goes out of the window. That's my opinion. Guys, I want to know your opinion. That is your update on everything that is going on today. If anything else breaks, of course, we'll bring it to you. England are playing tonight, so no live show tonight, guys. I'm just bringing up your updates. Like I said, on this channel, it will be daily content, a mixture of everything. And we've got football coming back as well this weekend, so stay tuned for all of that as well. But absolute buzzing with the start of the channel. Cheers for everyone who's, a, who's subscribed, all the new subscribers, absolutely brilliant. We're going to bring you updates constantly, all the time, and there's loads of plans going ahead for the channel as well, guys. So just stay tuned. Hit that, sub, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notifications. Give the video a like. Absolutely buzzing with the amount of likes. Loving my work right now. Absolutely buzzing being back on the street, in the studio at home, and just doing everything the way that I feel YouTube and United and raw for it should be. Guys, absolutely buzzing. Let me know what you think of everything that I've brought up in the video here. Is it all on Ten Hag? That's the question. Comment below. Cheers for watching, everyone. See you in the next one.